A new turbo generator from Rolls-Royce is a lightweight, power-dense variant which can exponentially increase an electric aircraft's flight time. Ranging from 500 to 1200 kilowatts, the unit can recharge batteries and provide energy to the electric motors. And in turn, this can set a new standard for electric aircraft. But is this counterintuitive? The main immediate benefits of an electric vehicle is that it's cheap to build, easy to maintain and commercialize, which kind of explains why we see a lot of concepts out there. But incorporating a turbine would dramatically increase costs, not to mention the added fuel weight to this overall hybrid system. So combining a fuel tank plus batteries seems like it's a crazy idea. But this is a little bit more complex than it seems, because current battery energy densities are very low. The best electric VTOLs out there can get maybe 150 miles, but some of the top-end helicopters can reach over 700. So maybe there could be a balancing act in utilizing a hybrid system. This is why we see larger or higher performance aircraft use a variation of the jet engine. It's relatively efficient, and it has a high power to weight ratio. And as we know, weight is a common enemy to aircraft. A turbine can also be utilized in power generation. It can drive a generator, churning a rotor, and inducing current into the stator. This idea has been known for some time, and with a light enough turbo generator, you can dramatically increase the range of the electric VTOL. We have already seen kind of a parallel development played around in hybrid ground vehicles. Utilize a small ice range extender, charge the batteries, and continue driving on the road. In essence, that is what is being proposed for hybrid aircraft. Except, we are talking significant power gains with a turbine-based generator, up to the megawatts. But let's just say that you can incorporate both batteries and the fuel weight. There's another problem with these turbine-based generators. They are really expensive because of novel materials and precise machining needed to withstand these extreme forces. That's just one of the reasons why we are still seeing basic aircraft with piston reciprocating engines. As of right now, they are still quite a bit cheaper and easier to build. Even though there are altitude and controllability drawbacks, the piston engine will likely stay around for some time. However, we are starting to see some very impressive innovations which may evolve this type of aircraft. Rolls-Royce has already developed a turbo generator which can supply over 1 megawatt of power. The weight of the fuel plus the overall dimensions of the vehicle is still not really specified, so there definitely will be a formula involved with this balancing act. Honda has also developed a hybrid turbine which is based on the HF120 turbofan. This can achieve a very high power density, and it was very interesting to see the company claim that this can threefold the range of an ordinary electric VTOL. However, this is also dependent on other variables such as the design of the aircraft and its transformative abilities. Horizon Aircraft definitely shed some light on these variables with the Cavrit. The wings are able to shapeshift and enclose the fans so that it can reduce drag. It will also feature a hybrid power generation system, more specifically a 1 megawatt Honeywell turbo generator. All this amounts to a 7 passenger 900 mile range craft which would basically shatter any current electric VTOL record out there. So evidently, there are many companies working on a turbo generator hyper propulsion system, and I think the viability of this is going to be revealed in the next couple of years. Having said all that, this does not necessarily mean that we have an economical way of designing a personal aircraft which is affordable to everyone. And the turbine-based turbo generator is really expensive to build, but that is kind of quickly changing now with new technologies. We have already seen how algorithms and 3D printing brought the hyperganic aerospike engine to life, but this is also happening in the realm of microturbines. PTC just recently revealed this 8 pound variant, which was printed as a single component. This included all the rotary and stationary parts, so everything from the bearings to the seals are built in. Printed from Inconel in only 13 hours, it eliminates machining or even welding, basically meaning that it can dramatically bring down costs, speed up construction, and increase efficiency. However, the end game is to actually prove that this prototype can run and make this a viable solution. Sierra Turbines has also experimented with 3D printed engines, and one of their prototypes has around 50% weight reduction with a 2000 watt hour per kilogram density. Featuring a super alloy, this mini engine can reach temperatures unsustainable in normal microturbines. 
the end result is transforming a 61 part build into one piece, which can last considerably longer. Even Rolls-Royce has experimented with engineering the combustor with additive manufacturing. A couple things to keep in mind is now we have pretty accurate simulation tools. And just like the hyperganic engine, we could see maybe new ideas that come forth from AI algorithms. In conclusion, a turbo generator could be 3D printed if it's constructed through additive manufacturing. We are going to find out in very short time whether or not these hybrid propulsion systems even work. But at the very least, we are looking at an engine which could be implemented for a far lower cost. And that's a big deal. But more importantly, I would like to know what you think about all this. So please leave a comment, like the video if you enjoyed it, and also make sure to subscribe to my channel.